Hello everyone. Praise the Lord everyone. Once again you are welcome into the time of dwelling in his presence. I welcome each and everyone into the presence of the Most High God. I welcome everyone. You are welcome into an hour of dwelling in his presence. Father, we thank you tonight. We bless you tonight. We worship you tonight. We glorify you tonight, Daddy. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor and adoration in the mighty name of Jesus. We commit tonight into your hand. Or this morning, this afternoon, everywhere people are watching. We commit each and every one, Lord, into your hand tonight. That us we hear your word. Precious Holy Spirit. May you touch each and every one and help us to be connected to your word tonight. Or this morning, this afternoon, wherever we are hearing from, that the name of the Lord Jesus will be praised and will be glorified. We thank you, Lord. We bless you. We give you praise. We give you the glory. Thank you, Jesus. We glorify your name, Lord. Let's spend some few minutes to bless the name of the Lord tonight. Let's spend some few minutes and let's give him worship. Wherever you are, begin to exalt the name of the Lord. Yes, Lord. Let me give glory to your name. Oh Lord, glory to your name. Oh Lord, for your name is true and greatly to be praised. And we give worship to your name. Oh Lord, worship to your name. Oh, we bless you, we bless you, Father, we glorify you. For your name to be praised and glorified. Your name is higher than any other name. We bless you, Lord. Yes. We give you praise, we give you praise, we give you praise. We give you all the honor, all the adoration in the mighty name of Jesus. We bless you, Lord, we glorify you, Lord. May your name be praised than any other name, Lord. For your name. Father, your name is great and greatly to be praised. We bless you, we bless you, we bless you, we bless you, we bless you. We bless you, Lord, we bless you, Lord. We glorify you, Lord. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you glory, Father. We thank you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We magnify you, Lord. Precious Holy Spirit, speak to us tonight. Speak to us tonight. Father, reveal yourself unto us tonight. Or this morning, whatever time we are listening or we are watching, Precious Holy Spirit, may you reveal deep things unto us in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. We give you praise, Lord. We give you praise, Lord. We give you praise. Father, in the name of Jesus, speak to us tonight and let your way Take control of our entire being. That the name of the Lord Jesus we praise and glorify. We thank you, Lord. We bless you, Father. We give you praise. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I greet you all in the name of the Lord Jesus. And you are welcome into an hour of dwelling. 
in his presence. Once again, it's a privilege for us to be sharing the word of God with you wherever you are. And I want you to be alert and pay attention as the, as the Spirit of the Lord leads us and takes us through the Word of God. Because we are in a time that we need the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ. We need the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's the time we are in. And we thank God for the opportunity He's given us to go into His Word. If you have joined in, you are welcome into an hour of dwelling in His presence. And I'll plead with each and every one that invite as many that you can invite. Please invite as many that you can invite to join us. Because tonight, the Lord is going to teach us something that is very deep. The Holy Spirit is going to take us into a deeper dimension tonight. So I'll plead with you, as many who have come online, this is a message that God wants each and every one, as many in the body of Christ, to receive and to understand. I'll plead with each and every one, invite as many in your contact to join us on life, to join us live because the Holy Spirit is about to teach us he's about to teach us to take us into a deeper dimension of the revelation of the Word of God we have come to a time that only the revelation of truth is what can hold us and tonight I believe strongly that the Spirit of the Lord is going to take us into a deeper dimension. Amen. Once again, I greet you all in the name of the Lord Jesus. And you are welcome into an hour of dwelling in His presence. And I plead with my listeners, please invite as many that you can to join us live. As we go into the Word of God. Because I love the subject tonight. To the extent that I would love to talk about it over and over and over until it gets into my bones. Amen. Tonight, I was meant to continue with the subject that we were doing last week. Concerning the signs of the coming of the Lord Jesus. But the Spirit of the Lord is prompting us to go through this subject. And one of the important things is we always have to follow the leading of the Spirit. Amen. We have to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. And tonight, I want to share with you a very important subject. Very important subject. Fellowshipping with the Holy Spirit. Fellowshipping with the Holy Spirit. This is one of the most important subjects as children of God. As children of God. This is one of the most important subjects. Especially the time that we are in. Please invite as many as possible. To join us live. As many as possible. That you can invite. Invite them to join us live. We want to share tonight. Fellowshipping with the Holy Spirit. Mostly we talk, we mention the name of the Holy Spirit and we talk about Him, but we normally don't get teachings like fellowshipping with the Spirit. But tonight we thank God for giving us the privilege to share. And to learn how we can fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Mostly before I share fellowshipping with the Spirit, I mostly like to share who is the Holy Spirit. 
But tonight, I'm just following the directions of the Spirit. And we're going to talk about fellowshipping with the Holy Spirit. And I want you to pay attention. Pay attention very carefully and follow. And I'm not going to take much of your time. But I believe that the Spirit of the Lord will take us into a deeper dimension. Amen. I believe God for a deep revelational truth tonight. And as many who have opened their spirit to receive from the Lord Jesus, to receive from the Holy Spirit, I can guarantee you tonight that you're going to receive a revelation. Amen. Please turn your Bible with me to the book of uh, 2 Corinthians. The, letter, the second letter to the church of Corinth. 2 Corinthians chapter number 13 and verse 14. Please turn with me. Now the Bible says, The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. 2 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 14. I read from the Good News Bible. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Now, Paul wrote an episode to the church in Corinth. He wrote the first letter and then he wrote the second letter. So at the end of his second letter, he said, the grace of the Lord Jesus, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. I want you to understand tonight that the grace is from our Lord Jesus Christ. The love is from the Father. The Bible says, for God so loved the world. The love is from the Father. The grace is from the Lord Jesus. And it said, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Now, this is the secret. The grace is from the Lord Jesus. The love is from the Father, but we cannot enjoy, we cannot benefit, we cannot take, make full use of the grace and the love of God without the proper fellowshipping with the Holy Spirit. This is a subject that a church we have completely ignored. We have ignored when it comes to the person of the Holy Spirit. We mostly talk about God the Father. We talk about God the Son. But when it comes to the Holy Spirit, we only know Him as the, 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 the power of God that comes on believers. But I want you to understand that the Holy Spirit is more than just the power of God. He is the third person of the Trinity. And in fact, the Spirit of the Lord is the first of the Trinity to be revealed in the book of Genesis. Spirit of the Lord is the first to be revealed in the book of Genesis. But that's not the subject tonight. We're talking about fellowshipping with the Holy Spirit. Like I said, the grace is from the Lord Jesus. The love is from the Father. But we cannot enjoy the grace. We cannot enjoy the love from the Father unless we, we, we fellowship with the Spirit of the Lord. We mostly say, oh, I'm doing good by His grace. Everything is okay by the grace of God. But that is not the proper meaning of grace. We just use the word lightly. 
But tonight, I want us to go into a bit deeper fellowshipping with the Holy Spirit. How important it is. How precious it is that people of God we will fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Now, when we say fellowship, what do we mean when Paul said to the church, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all? Now, to have fellowship with the Holy Spirit means to commune with him it is to actively engage in a relationship with the holy spirit i'll say it again to fellowship with the spirit means to commune to commune with the spirit it means to actively engage in a in a relationship with him with the holy spirit now the word fellowship as was used in 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 14, the origin is, I will borrow one Greek word tonight. I normally don't want to do, do that. But for the sake of the teaching, the Greek word is kononia, which means to commune, to communicate, sharing together, to participate to be friendship, to have intimacy or communion. Now, I would like to use the word communion because some translation even use and the communion of the Holy Spirit. When we say communion, we only know one side of communion, which means the Lord's Supper. And I'll use that one as an example. When we talk about communion or the Lord's Supper, we eat the body and the blood, which means we share his body, we share his blood. So when the Bible says, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, it means we have to commune with the Holy Spirit. We have to engage in a relationship with the Holy Spirit. And this is one of the things that we don't, we hardly hear in the body of Christ. But tonight, tonight, I want us to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is teaching us in this end time. I believe this is one of the most important subjects. It's very crucial. We will know as we go. It's very, very, very crucial. Amen. I believe we've come to a time we love to hear the prosperity messages, the blessing messages, but I can tell you if you grasp the revelational truth and you can walk in fellowship, in constant fellowship, with the Holy Spirit, I will guarantee you that when you walk, you walk in the presence of God. It's going to be awesome tonight. The presence of God is so strong. But I want to take my time and teach because I want us to understand the subject. I pray the Holy Spirit will help me to understand like help me to break things down, to communicate to the lowest level so the listeners can understand exactly what God wants to communicate to us. Amen. So, like I said, to fellowship with the Spirit means to have a relationship with the Spirit. It means to actively engage. It's like when you, those of us in a married relationship, if you marry to a husband or to a wife, 
if you marry for 10 years and then if you don't spend time with each other if you don't talk to each other even though you may have stayed for 10 years but i can guarantee you you don't know each other it is not a guarantee that once you are staying together you know each other no it doesn't work that way it doesn't work that way so the bible specify that we have to fellowship with the holy spirit please invite as many that you can invite that we can all listen to this subject because it is so so important it is so important that we need in this end time amen now the bible says in romans chapter 8 verse 16 that god's spirit joins himself to our spirit to declare that we are god's children when we become born again there is human spirit every human being has got a spirit in fact you are a spirit you are a spirit and you have a soul and then you live in a body so when we receive christ our spirit becomes alive our spirit becomes alive so according to romans chapter 8 verse 16 the bible says god's spirit in other words the holy spirit joins himself to our spirit to declare that we are god's children hmm. our spirit alone doesn't have enough sense to know that we are god's children so when we receive christ what happens is that the spirit of the lord that we receive joins with our spirit and then he makes us to be aware he makes us to know that we are children of god now i want to show you something before i continue when you re when we receive the holy spirit into our spirit you don't have two spirit you don't have two spirit living in you according to romans 8 16 the bible says the spirit of the lord joins joins with our spirit now i want to show you this one i want to show you this i've got two type of liquid let us say one is holy spirit and one is the human spirit one is the spirit of the lord and one is the human spirit so when we receive christ our spirit joins with the spirit of the lord now when our spirit joins with the spirit of the lord it is not two colors it becomes one when our spirit joins with the spirit of the lord the holy spirit joins with our spirit so now i want you to know that you don't have two spirits you don't have two spirits you have one spirit and that is the spirit of the lord takes over your spirit the spirit of the lord takes over your spirit so that, that the bible says in romans chapter 8 verse 16 that god's spirit joins himself to our spirit to declare that we are god's children so when we receive christ when we receive the holy spirit he joins with our spirit so the bible says whosoever 
like every now let me put it this way every spirit you bow to every spirit you submit to you become one with that spirit if you bow to the spirit of occult you become one if you bow to the spirit of voodoo you become one with that spirit that is why any woman any man of god who initiates in occult you do it with your spirit so your spirit which is the real you becomes one with whatever spirit that you join with so when you join with the spirit of the lord you become one with the holy spirit so the bible says in romans 8 11 if the spirit that raised christ from the dead dwells in you that same spirit will vitalize will quicken will give life to your mortal bodies amen we're talking about fellowshipping with the holy spirit fellowshipping with the holy spirit with the spirit of the lord shall we please turn our bibles to john chapter 14 john 14 verse 16 to 17. now just about jesus when he was about to leave he said something he said i will ask the father john chapter 16 john, john chapter 14 16 to 17. jesus said i will ask the father and he will give you another helper who will stay with you forever now i want you to watch the words he said he will stay with you he will stay with you forever and he says he is the spirit who reveals the truth about god the world cannot receive him because it cannot see him or know him but you who are listening to me the bible says you you know him because he remains with you and he is in you now i want you to understand that when you receive christ the holy spirit is in you and then he is with you mm. i pray the holy spirit will help us to to break things down i'm trying to explain but i'm finding how to explain it to the lowest but i'll do as he leads amen so jesus said the spirit will stay with you will stay with you some translation use will abide with you and it says forever forever he is the spirit who reveals the truth about god i want to i want us to understand that when you don't fellowship with the holy spirit when you don't follow the leading of the spirit you cannot understand scriptures you can only memorize scriptures you can memorize the bible verses in your head but there's difference between memorizing the bible in your head and then the word getting into your spirit then the spirit of the lord will turn it into life when you don't have the spirit of the lord when you don't fellowship with him he doesn't teach you things amen and that is where we find ourselves now in the body of christ we just claim to be christians we profess to be christians but the real power that comes from the holy spirit is not there 
That's why we find it so hard to live in holiness, to live in righteousness. It becomes so hard for us. Why? Because the human nature cannot live holy. The human nature cannot live righteous. It takes the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, Jesus was much particular with his words. He says, the Spirit will abide, will stay with us forever. He will stay with us forever. Now, I want you to understand that when we don't fellowship with the Spirit, we cannot follow His leading. I'll break it. Without fellowshipping with the Spirit, you cannot follow His leading. As the Bible says in Romans chapter 8, verse 14, that as men who are led by the Spirit of the Lord, they are the children of God. In other words, as many who follow the leading of the Spirit, they are the children of God. Now let's look at it this way. If we don't fellowship with the Holy Spirit, if we don't commune with the Holy Spirit, if you don't share, if you don't en we don't engage in relationship with the Holy Spirit, we would not know Him. Now, I want to ask you a question. How can you recognize the voice of someone you don't know? I want you to answer that question for yourself. And I'll say it again. How can you recognize the voice of someone you do not know? You cannot recognize the voice of someone you do not know. But you can only recognize the voice of someone you know. So, when we spend time and fellowship with the Holy Spirit, when we spend time and have an intimacy with the Holy Spirit, when we spend time and have relationship with the Holy Spirit, and then we come to a point that we know Him as a person. Now, I want you to understand that the Holy Spirit is a person. He is God, and He is a person. The Spirit of the Lord is a person and he is God. So we need to spend time with him in order for us to know his personality. If we don't know him as a person, we cannot recognize his voice when he speaks. That's why in most cases, you hear many believers and then they will be saying, Oh, and something was telling me. And something was telling me. Because we have not been taught how to fellowship with the Spirit. For instance, if you live with your wife or your brother or your sister in the same house, in the same room, and then if you have, you have communication for many a time, for many, 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 many years. When that person talks, and even if that person is in a distance, the moment you hear the person's voice, you will be able to recognize, mm, this is this person's voice. This is this person's voice. How do you know? Because you have spent time with that person, so you can recognize their voice. That is exactly what happens in the spiritual realm. We need to fellowship with the Holy Spirit. We need to spend time with Him. And when we spend time with the Holy Spirit, we tend to know who He is as a person. You know Him as a person, and then you know Him as God. 
When you know the spirit of the Lord as a person, you can recognize his voice whenever he speaks to you. You can recognize him whenever he speaks to you. This is where we are lacking, people of God. We all pray, we read the Bible, but we miss when it comes to hearing the voice of the Spirit because we don't spend time and fellowship with the Holy Spirit. And therefore, we don't know Him as a person. We don't recognize His voice when He speaks. People of God, we have come to a time that we need to have a personal intimacy with the Spirit of the Lord. We need to have a personal relationship with the Spirit of the Lord. It's not enough to be talking in tongues. It's not enough. Now, let me tell you this one. Speaking in tongues is a sign that you have received the Holy Spirit. But speaking in tongues doesn't guarantee that you have the Holy Spirit. I'll say it again. You may disagree, but that's the truth. And I'll prove it. Speaking in tongues is a proof that you have received the Holy Spirit. But speaking in tongues is not a proof that you still have the Holy Spirit. Now, what is the proof that you have the Holy Spirit? The proof that you have the Holy Spirit is the fruit of the Spirit. It's the fruit of the Spirit. Because you cannot bear the fruit without fellowshipping with the Spirit. Now, I want to explain something very deep here. I want to explain something deep here. Now, the fruit of the recreated human spirit, it doesn't come from our human spirit because human spirit doesn't have love. Human spirit doesn't have self-control. Human spirit doesn't have patience. If human spirit does, then the world or the unbelievers will have it. But I want you to understand that the fruit of the recreated human spirit is not from the human spirit. I just explained to you that when you receive Christ, the spirit of the Lord joins with your spirit. So, the, that, the fruit of the spirit is the character of the Holy Spirit is the character, is the nature of the Holy Spirit. Love, self-control, patience, is the character of God. Is the character of God. So when we spend time and fellowship with the Holy Spirit, when we fellowship with the Holy Spirit, His nature, His character, His personality, my goodness, forms part of our spirit. Thank you, Jesus. This is deep. When we spend time and fellowship with the Holy Spirit, His nature, His character, His personality joins with our spirit. And then he, because we spend time and fellowship with Him, His character forms part of us. And then we begin to produce the character of the Holy Spirit. And that is the fruit of the Spirit. I'll say it again. The fruit of the Spirit, the fruit of the recreated human spirit, is the character, is the nature of the Holy Spirit. So when we fellowship with the Holy Spirit, when we spend time with the Holy Spirit, when we spend time in a relationship, in an intimacy with the Holy Spirit, His character and His nature begins to be depicted in our lives. His love, His patience, 
his temperance, and that is the fruit of the spirit, and then it begins to come out, it begins to be demonstrated in our in our lives, and that is the fruit of the recreated human spirit. And let me let me show you in a negative way. If you have a, a friend, because the Bible has made us to know that evil communication corrupt good manners. Which means when you fellowship with good association, with sorry, with bad association, when you fellowship with bad friends, their character, their nature has influence on you. So in the same way, in a positive way, when we fellowship with the Holy Spirit, when we spend time with the Spirit of the Lord, His nature, His character, His personality, my goodness, is depicted, forms in your spirit. This is what we need as a body of Christ. If we have to take over this world, we need to spend time with the Holy Spirit to the point that his nature, his character begins to be so much infused in our spirit that when we go out and we talk, you can't see anything but Christ talking through us. This is what we need. We need to spend time with the spirit of the Lord. We need to fellowship with the Holy Spirit. We have come to a time that most of the crucial subject in the kingdom of God we have completely ignored. We have ignored fellowshipping with the Spirit. But my brother, my sister, we cannot without the presence, without the Holy Spirit there is no Christianity. Without the Holy Spirit, all we can do is religion. It's religious formality. Shall we please turn our Bibles to Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8 verse 9. The Bible says, but you do not live as your human nature tells you to. Instead, you live as the Spirit tells you to. If, in fact, God's Spirit lives in you. Now the Bible says, whoever does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to Him. Hello? I'm not the one saying, the Bible says, whosoever does not have the Spirit of of Christ does not belong to him. According to Romans chapter 8 verse 9. If you don't have the spirit of Christ. The Bible says you don't belong to him. Now. It doesn't matter. How authentic. A letter. Is being written. By President Trump. If that letter doesn't have the presidential seal, my brother, my sister, if that letter doesn't have the presidential seal, it will not be recognized as the letter from the president. It may have been written by the president himself, but if it doesn't have the seal of the president, it will not be recognized as a letter from the president. As a child of God. The seal. That you are a child of God. Is not because you can talk in tongues for four hours. The seal. That. Proves that you are a child of God. Is not because you belong to one of the. Biggest denomination. With 10,000. 20,000 congregation. But the proof. The seal. That you belong to Christ. Is the Holy Spirit. I say it again. The seal, the proof that you are a child of God is the Holy Spirit. 
my brother, my sister, when you don't have the Spirit of the Lord, when you don't have the Holy Spirit, you don't belong to Him. You don't belong to Him. In other words, you don't qualify to go to heaven. Only the people who have the seal, who have the mark, who have the presence of the Holy Spirit upon their lives, that bears the fruit and the character, the nature of the Holy Spirit. They are the people that are ready for the master. Now let me tell you this. You can operate in all the nine gifts of the Spirit and still go to hell. I'll say it again. You can operate in all the nine gifts of the Spirit and still end up in hell. But you cannot walk in the fruit of the Spirit and go to hell. It is not possible. You cannot walk in the fruit and go to hell. It is not possible because before you can bear the fruit of the Spirit, it means you may have spent time and fellowship with the Holy Spirit to the extent that His nature, His character, His personality has become one with you. That when you walk, you walk with Christ. When you talk, you talk with Christ. When you do anything, it's the same as Jesus manifesting His glory through you. We have come to a time that the church, we are so much fascinated by the gift of the Spirit. I cherish the gift of the Spirit. I cherish all the nine gifts of the Spirit, but don't get carried away by the gift of the Spirit. Don't get carried away by the gift of the Spirit, but let the fruit of the Spirit take over your life. And when the fruit takes over your life, automatically, the gift, the nine gift of the Spirit is for every born again believer who is filled with the Holy Ghost. The gift of the Spirit is not only for the apostles, it's not only for the pastors, it's not only for the evangelists, for teachers, and for prophets. It's for every believer, every born again child of God who is filled with the Holy Spirit. And that is why tonight God wants us to spend time in fellowship with the Holy Spirit. And the more we spend time with the Holy Spirit, the more His anointing, the more His glory will come on us. My goodness. We need to spend time with the Holy Spirit. He is the carrier of the presence of God. He carries the presence of God. He carries the presence of God. The Holy Spirit is the carrier of the presence of God. So when the Holy Spirit, when we spend time and fellowship with Him, His nature, his character, his personality begin to be depicted in our lives. Begin to be seen in our lives. People of God, we have come to a time that we ignore, we ignore the foundational truth and the Bible says, if the foundation is destroyed, what can the righteous do? I have not seen any building. I have not seen any structure without foundation. Let me put it this way. The strength of your structure depends on the strength of the foundation. The strength of your Christian life Depends on the strength of your foundation. My brother, my sister, we cannot ignore a foundational truth. 
a one of the foundational truth that when we come into Christ, the Bible says if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. And one of the foundational truth is for us to have fellowship with the Holy Spirit is for us to have an intimacy with the Holy Spirit. We need to spend time with the Spirit of the Lord. We need to spend time and fellowship with the Holy Spirit, people of God. I said the last time that one of the things that God is so disappointed in the, people, in the body of Christ is for the church to ignore the presence of the Holy Spirit. It's for the church to ignore the person of the Holy Spirit. He doesn't form part in our daily lives. He doesn't form part in our daily walk. He doesn't form part in our daily activities. People of God, one of the things that grieves the Father is we ignore the leading of the Spirit. We ignore His leading. The Father is so disappointed in us, the people of God. Because we ignore the leading of the Spirit. We ignore the direction of the Spirit. And we think we can do it on our own. We think we can do it by ourselves. If we can do it, there wouldn't be any need for Him to send the Holy Spirit. If we can serve God, by ourselves, if we can worship Him with our intellect, there wouldn't be any need for Him to send us His Spirit. There wouldn't be any need for Him to send His Spirit to us. The Holy Spirit is here to teach us the way to worship, the way to serve the master. He doesn't glorify himself. But he glorifies the master. It all begins when we spend time and fellowship with the Holy Spirit. We need to spend time with him. We need to fellowship with him. The more we do, the more he leads us to know the revelation about the Lord Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit is the one who makes us to know Jesus. How can we know Jesus without the Holy Spirit? How can we know the Father without the Holy Spirit? The Father knows. The Master knows that we cannot. We cannot. We cannot live holy. We cannot live righteous without the Holy Spirit. That is why I don't spend time to tell people, don't wear this, don't put this on. Because when the Spirit of the Lord takes over your life, nobody will come and tell you, don't wear this, don't put this on, don't go to this place. Because the Spirit in you will become your light. The Spirit in you will become your guide. He will be the one who will tell you what to wear and what not to wear. We need the person of the Holy Spirit in our daily lives. My brother, my sister, we are getting into a time that is going to be so hard than what we are seeing. It takes only the people who know the Spirit of the Lord and who can hear the voice of the Spirit. And how can you know the voice of the Spirit unless you spend time and fellowship with Him 
unless you spend time and have a relationship with the Spirit of the Lord. We need to spend time with the Spirit of the Lord. We need to spend time. All the preachers, all they will tell us is pray, pray, pray. But I'm here to tell you tonight, if you pray without the Holy Spirit, the Father will not, eat, the Father will not hear you. When you pray without the Holy Spirit, the Father cannot hear you. If you don't know, I'm telling you tonight. That Christianity, there is no Christianity without the Holy Spirit. What makes Christianity different from Muslims? What makes Christianity different from Hindi? What makes Christianity different from Hare Krishna? The difference is the, is the presence of the Holy Spirit. The difference is we have the Holy Spirit. But now tell me, what is the essence that all we say is we have the Holy Spirit, we have the Holy Spirit, but we don't follow His leading. We don't follow His leading. The reason why we don't follow His leading is because we don't know Him as a person. We do not know him as a person and therefore we don't know how to connect with him. But I'm here to tell you tonight that the Holy Spirit is a person and he is God. And he is here on earth and he wants to fellowship with you. He wants to fellowship with you. He wants to have a relationship with you. Tonight, I want us all to repent and ask the Holy Spirit to lead and guide and direct our lives. Don't do anything because somebody is doing it. Do it because the Spirit of the Lord is leading you to do it. Don't do anything because everybody is doing it. But do it because the Spirit is leading you to do it. I can say with confidence that I had the mind to do uh, teachings on Facebook, but I didn't know how to do it until I was led to do it. And I was led when the time, the, the, the subject, and that's why we call it dwelling an hour of dwelling in his presence that's how this broadcast came about i'm not doing it because many people are doing it no i'm doing it because he asked me to do it but tonight i've got an important message for you that we need to spend time and fellowship with the spirit of the lord because when we don't spend time in fellowship with him, we can never walk in holiness and we can never walk in righteousness. It's going to become so hard for us. And when we hear about holiness, righteousness, perfection, all we say is these people are judgmental. It's because we don't fellowship with the Holy Spirit. So we don't have the power that anoint him. When you fellowship with the Holy Spirit, His anointing rests upon you. His presence rests upon you. My brother, my sister, the church, we are meant to walk in a glorious power. But that glory is not being seen the glory of the Father is not being seen. Instead, when you walk into the house of God, it's full of entertainment. And the things that does not glorify the Father, that is what we see in the house of God. That is what we see in the house of God. When you say it, 
They will tell you, you are judgmental. But I want you to have an intimate relationship with the Holy Spirit. And when you do, if you have that intimate relationship with the Holy Spirit, the next time you walk into any atmosphere, you can straight away know that the presence of God is not there. That the presence of God is not there. My brother, my sister, we need to spend time and fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Otherwise, we will be talking that we are Christians, but we will miss the mark. Rapture will happen, and we will have no clue. We will be in the church, and we will be dancing, and rapture may have been taking place. My brother, my sister, you cannot serve God without the presence of the Holy Spirit. Is so important. So Jesus said to the disciples, He says, Don't go, don't go anywhere. Tarry until you are endued with power from above, according to Luke 24 49. Jesus told the disciples that they should wait, they shouldn't go anywhere. Otherwise, somebody like Peter, the next day, he will take his boat and he will be there to go to evangelism. But Jesus, who knows the human being, the human nature, without the Holy Spirit, and he has also been, he knows, he knows what he's talking about. So he said to them, wait until you are endued with power from above. Jesus told the early disciples, the apostles, that they should wait. They shouldn't do anything. They shouldn't do any ministry. They shouldn't do any teachings. They shouldn't do any preachings until they are endued with power from above. The reason why there's so much fake people in the body of Christ is we begin ministry without the leading of the Spirit. And therefore, we have to source our own power. We have to source our own ways to produce miracle. I'm here to tell you tonight that miracle is not anything. If we're a child of God, and you follow miracles, I pity you because they are meant to follow you. The miracles are meant to follow you. When he sent them in Matthew chapter 10, verse 7 and 8, he said to them, When you go, heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out demons. Tonight I'm here to tell you if the church can spend time and fellowship with the Holy Ghost, if we can spend time and fellowship with Him, then that word that He said, We shall heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out demons, is there for you and I. But we are not seen. Why? Because we don't spend time and fellowship with the Holy Spirit. We don't spend time in fellowship with the Holy Ghost. We call ourselves Christians. We call ourselves people of God, children of God. Now, when Jesus, when he sent the 72, he lent, he lent, he gave them, he gave them the, the Spirit. He lent it to them. Because at that time, the, 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 the disciples didn't have the Spirit of the Lord. They didn't have the Holy Ghost. So when Jesus sent them, the Bible says, He gave them. He gave them. Let's go to Matthew 10. Turn your Bible with me to Matthew Chapter 10. 
Matthew chapter 10, verse 1. The Bible says, And when he, has, he had called his 12 disciples, he gave them, he gave them power over unclean spirits. Now, when Jesus sent the 12 disciples, the Bible says he gave them. Why? Because they did not have the Holy Spirit and therefore they could not have gone to the evangelism without the Holy Spirit. People of God, we need the Holy Spirit than ever before. We are in a time that we need the presence and the power of the Holy Ghost. So that when you speak, it's not just words, but it comes with the fire and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Now the Bible says, He gave them power over unclean spirits. Now when you look at the Greek root of that power is exousia, which means he lent them, is he gave them, he gave them authority. He gave it to them. It's like he had a power like this and he gave it to them. Take this with you and take it. And after he gave them that power, because whenever you are walking in the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit, this is what happens. Matthew chapter 10 and verse 7. 7 and 8. He says, and as you go, preach, saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. But then it says, heal the sick. Cleanse the lepers. Raise the dead. Cast out demons. Now I'm here to tell you tonight. The people of God, the same way that he said, whosoever is born of God does not work in sin. The same way he's telling us that when we go, we should raise the dead and cast out demons. This is a command to the body of Christ. This is a command to us, the believers. Now let's ask ourselves, are we laying our hands on the sick? Are we raising the dead? No, we are not. Why? Because we are not fellowshipping with the Spirit. We are not spending time with the one who carries the anointing of God. We are not spending time with the Holy Spirit. Therefore, we cannot walk in His power. We cannot walk in his power. As chapter 1 verse 8, the Bible says, When he comes, when he comes, when he comes, you shall receive. You shall receive. When he comes, you shall receive. You cannot have the Holy Spirit without power. You cannot have the Holy Spirit without power. That's what I pity People, when I hear people pray, God, give me power. That's a wrong prayer. You don't ask God to give you power, but you ask God to fill you with his spirit. And when the spirit comes, the power is already there. Because the Bible says, when he comes, you shall receive power. And that power is dunami. So we have two ways put together here. We have the power which is exosia and we, we have the power which is dunamin. We both have the power of the authority and then the power which we carry as people of God. My brother, my sister, how much time do we spend to fellowship with the Holy Spirit? If we don't spend time with him, we will fail. We will fail. And we will miss the mark. If we don't spend time with him. We will fail. We will fail him. Unless we spend time with him. Unless we spend time. 
with him. We need to spend time with him. According to Romans chapter 8 verse 14. Those who are led by God's spirit are God's children. As many who are led by the spirit of the Lord. They are the children of God. So my question is, what about those who go to church? What about those who speak in tongues? What about those who pray eight hours a day? What about those who can recite the Bible from Genesis to Revelation? You may be able to recite the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, but if you don't have the Holy Spirit, if you don't follow the leading of the Spirit, the Word of God says you do not belong to Him. Christianity is not about how many verses you've memorized in your head. But Christianity is how the Spirit leads your life. How much do you avail to the leading of the Spirit? The Bible says only those who follow the leading of the Holy Spirit, they are the children of God. My brother, my sister, we are in the end time. We are in the end time. In no time, the one who is coming will come. How prepared are you? You cannot be prepared without having fellowship with the Holy Spirit. It's not about how much you can talk. It's not about how much you can pray. It's not about how much you can teach. It's about how much of the Spirit of the Lord do you, you fellowship with. How much do you avail to the leading of the Spirit? How do you follow His leading? How do you follow His guidance? I said it before, if you don't spend time with him, how could you, how can you recognize his voice? If you don't spend time with the Holy Spirit, how can you recognize his voice? How can you recognize his voice? That's why the Father wants us to spend time and fellowship with him. As the Bible says, that the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Like I said before, the grace, the grace is from the Lord Jesus. The love is from the Father, but we cannot, we cannot enjoy the grace and we cannot enjoy the love from the Father unless we have a personal fellowship with the Holy Spirit. We need to spend time with the Holy Spirit. We need to know Him as a person. We need to know Him as a person. He is a person. Just like Jesus is a person, the Holy Spirit is also a person. We need to know him as a person. We need to know him as a person. And he is God. He is God and he is a person. We need to know him by having a fellowship with him. We need to have intimate relationship with the spirit of the Lord. My brother, my sister. The Bible says. The earth is waiting. For the manifestation. Of the sons of God. The world is waiting for you. The world is waiting for me. But how can they see. And how can they recognize. Except we can walk. In that might, in that power of the Holy Spirit. And how can we walk in the power of the Holy Spirit unless we fellowship with Him? Like I said, 
the more we fellowship with the Holy Spirit, his character, his nature, his personality forms part with our person, forms part with our spirit. And when you go out there, when you stretch forth your hand, this hand doesn't become your hand anymore, but you have the spirit of the Lord working through your hands. It is time, people of God, we allowed the Holy Spirit to take our hands, to take our mouth, to take our ears, and to take our eyes. It all begins when we spend time in fellowship with Him. The more time we spend with Him, the more we can know Him as a person, and the more we can know Him as God. When we begin to know him as a person and as God. When his character and his nature and his personality begin to be seen outwardly in our lives. Then he will trust us and, and trust us with his gifts. That's when you can. The gifts can be, money, can be demonstrated with character. With character. That is why we have many ministers of the gospel. With all the nine gifts of the spirit. But they will go to hell. Because they have gift without character. Now let me put it this way. It is dangerous. It is very dangerous. To operate in the gift. Without the character of the spirit. I say it again. It is dangerous to operate in the gift without the character of the spirit. My brother and sister, that would take you to hell for sure. That is why Jesus said, many will say to me on that day, Lord, didn't I heal in your name? I cast out demon in your name. And the Bible says, the master will say, depart from me, you who does what is not righteous. I do not know you. I want you to understand that you can only be known. You can only be known by the Father when you have the Spirit of the Lord. When you have the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is our seal. The Holy Spirit is our mark. My brother, my sister, it's so, so important. It's so important. And I wanted to share this message to as many as you can. Share to as many as you can. You can share through WhatsApp. You can share through messenger you can share through facebook because it's not everybody that is on facebook and thank god now with whatsapp you can op you can open the message you can open an attachment from facebook without you having a facebook account which is good and god is doing great things and marvelous things that people of god we need to embrace and follow the leading of the Spirit. And let's begin to walk in the power of the Holy Ghost. So we can begin to take over. We can only begin to take over when we embrace the power of the Spirit. When the character and the nature and the personality of the Holy Spirit began to be seen in our lives. That is when we can begin to take over. It's not by mouth talking. It's not by just quoting scriptures. Because the Bible says that the kingdom of heaven is not just words. It's not just words, but power. But power. But power. Tonight, I'm here to make you angry. I'm here to annoy you so you can desire to fellowship with the Spirit of the Lord. I want to annoy you tonight so you can begin to pursue 
to have intimate relationship with the Holy Spirit. That is what we need in this end time. That is what we need. When he comes, he will teach you the truth. He will make the word of God life. He will change the word of God from being a story to become a life. The word of God will no more become a story. It will not become a life. People of God, you cannot live your Christian life without fellowshipping with the Holy Spirit. Without fellowshipping with the Holy Spirit. From tonight, wherever you are hearing me, I want you to make a personal commitment. I want you to make a personal commitment that you want to walk with the Holy Spirit. You want to walk with the Holy Spirit. That's what the Lord needs from you tonight. Make a personal commitment that you want to have a personal, intimate relationship with the Holy Spirit. Because we've ignored the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, the so-called men of God, they get their occult spirit and all they do is, oh, we are prophesying, we are prophesying. Now, I'm here to tell you tonight that according to the Bible, prophecy will cease. Don't follow anything that is temporary. Prophecy will cease. The only thing that will not cease is the word of God. Therefore, tonight, I recommend you to pursue the word of God. To pursue fellowshipping with the spirit. And when you do, he will enlighten your understanding. He will open your spiritual eyes. And then you will begin to see things yourself. You will begin to see things yourself. The ninth gift of the spirit is for us the body of Christ. The ninth gift of the spirit is for every born again believer who is filled with the Holy Spirit. The ninth gift of the spirit is for every born again believer. Brother Philip was just a deacon. He was an apostle. He was just a deacon. Serving on the tables. And the Bible says. During the persecution. He ran to Samaria. But because Philip. Was somebody who had fellowship with the Holy Spirit. He is somebody who knew the Holy Spirit as a person. The Bible says when he stepped in Samaria. He preached Jesus. He preached Jesus. I recommend the Holy God. Even to the evangelist. When you go to evangelism. And when you go with the person of the Holy Ghost. He will touch people's heart. The Holy Spirit is the one who convicts people. It's not the words you are speaking. I want us to understand. People of God. When you go to evangelize. When you go out there. You are just a vessel. The conviction doesn't come from your words. But the conviction comes from the power of the Holy Spirit. So whatever we do. We need to surrender to the legion of the spirit. People of God. Let's surrender to the Holy Spirit. Whatever we do, let him take over. When he does, when he takes over, he does it perfectly because he is God. He knows the needs of the people. He knows the hearts of the people. He knows the desire of the people. He knows the wants of the people. If you are a minister and you are watching me, 
If God has called you and you are watching me, I will recommend that from today, whatever you do as a minister, follow the leading of the Spirit. Don't do it because somebody is doing it. Don't do it because it's working for somebody. Do it because the Spirit is leading you to do it. When you follow the leading of the Spirit, you can never fail. I'll say it again. You will never fail. When you follow the leading of the Spirit, you will never fail. It's not possible. People of God, I want to leave you here. And if God permit, I couldn't finish. But if God permits, a week by now, I would like us to continue. I want to, I want to do one more of this uh, fellowship with the Spirit. And if God permit, I want us to continue. How can we fellowship? With the Holy Spirit. Because all this while I've been talking about. We need to fellowship with the Spirit. We need to fellowship with Him. We need to spend time with Him. We need to fellowship with Him. So if God permit. A week today. If Jesus doesn't come. I want to continue. On how can we. Fellowship with the Spirit. Or how do we fellowship with the Spirit. But meanwhile, like I said, I want you to make commitment today. I want you to make commitment today. That from tonight or this morning or wherever you are hearing me from. Make commitment that you will be following the leading of the Holy Spirit. I'm not talking about any denomination here. That's not what I'm talking, but I'm talking about people of God. We need to follow the leading of the Spirit. We are disappointing the Father and we are disappointing the Lord Jesus because we ignore the leading of the Spirit. We ignore the direction of the Spirit. We want to do what will please man. Don't do anything that will please man. Because you're not going to answer to any man. But you will answer to the one who can kill and bring back to life. The Bible says we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. And we shall give an account. You will be accounted to whatever has been entrusted in your hearts. To the one who blessed you with that gift. And his name is Jesus. His name is Ayam Darajam. His name is Elohim El Shaddai. Jehovah. Yahweh. He is the one you will answer to. People of God. I want you to make commitment. That you are dedicating and recommitting your life. That you will follow the leading of the Spirit. Let the Holy Spirit take over your life. And when He takes over your life. Your Christian life will never be the same. Your talking will never be the same. You don't need somebody to come and tell you. Where to go. Where not to go. What to eat, what not to eat. That is why he's blessed everyone with his spirit. All we need to do is to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. Let's spend time with him. Let's spend time with the Holy Spirit. Let's talk to him. Let's fellowship with him. He is a person. He is a person. And he's here to help us know the master. He's here to help us know the father. That's why he's here. That's why the Holy Spirit is here. That's why the Holy Spirit is here. 
like I said before, if we can serve God without the Holy Spirit, he wouldn't have sent him to the church. People of God, if we can serve and worship God without the Holy Spirit, he wouldn't have sent him to us, the church. We have to understand there is nothing we can do as people of God without the leading of the Spirit. I'll say it again. Don't do anything because somebody is doing it. Do it because the Spirit is leading you to do it. And when you follow the leading of the Spirit, you see the result and you see the impact. I just want us to pray. I want us to pray tonight for a few minutes. I want us to pray. Because all of us, we need to rededicate our lives and recommit our lives to fellowship with the Holy Spirit. And I believe when we do, our lives will not be the same. Our lives will not be the same. Our lives will never be the same. Begin to bless the name of the Lord. Father, we bless you for your word. Father, we bless you tonight for your word. If you are watching me, I want you to pray because I want us to pray for a few minutes. Father, we bless you for your word tonight. We bless you for your word. We thank you for your word. If you don't know Jesus as your Lord and as your personal Savior, you may be going to church. You may have been in a church for years. But when you stay in a church or when you are born into church, it doesn't make you a child of God. The Bible says as many as received him, he gave them power to become his children. If you haven't received him as your Lord and as your Savior, wherever you are, I want you to go on your knees and ask him, Lord Jesus, I accept that I'm a sinner and I believe you died for me. Wash me with your blood tonight. Cleanse me with your blood tonight. And come into my life. Take over my life. Be the Lord and the God of my life. From now on, in Jesus' name. If you had just prayed that prayer, I can assure you, Jesus is right in your heart. And as many who have already received him, I want us to go before him because we all, I'm not taking myself out, we all, we have been sinning for not following the leading of the Holy Spirit. I want us all, let's go before the Father and let's repent for not following the leading of the Spirit because when we don't follow his leading, it's a sin. It's a sin. But we think only fornicating, drinking, smoking is sin, but biting. But when we don't follow the leading of the Holy Spirit, tonight let's go before Him and let's ask Him to forgive us. And let's repent and let's recommit our lives that from tonight onwards or from this morning onwards, we are rededicating our life. That we will follow the leading of the Spirit. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come before you, Lord. I surrender unto you tonight. That, Father, everywhere I've fallen of not following the leading of the Spirit, but followed my passion or followed my knowledge I come unto you tonight Lord 
Forgive me, Father. Everywhere I've done anything that wasn't led by your Spirit, Lord. I rededicate my life, Lord. Precious Holy Spirit, I commit my totality unto you. I surrender my all unto you tonight. That from tonight, I'll follow your leading and your directions. Precious Holy Spirit. Precious Holy Spirit. Help me to follow your leading tonight. In every way. In the name of the Lord Jesus. People of God, I want you to raise up your hand and pray and ask him to help you to follow his leading. Because there is a glory of God. There is a presence of God all over here. And I believe he is at where you are. I want you to believe him tonight. In the name of of the Lord Jesus. I want you to open your mouth and begin to recommit your life to the leading of the Holy Spirit. And if you follow the leading of the Spirit, you will walk in holiness, you walk in righteousness, and you will walk in the power of the Master. And everywhere you step the glory of the Father, the glory of the Son will be seen. People of God, people of God, Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, in the name of Jesus. As many as are watching, precious Holy Spirit, visit each and every one with your might right now. In the name of Jesus, precious Holy Spirit, fall afresh. Now, as many who believe with their heart. The Spirit of the Lord will be fallen afresh on you wherever you are. I just want you to believe. I want you to believe. The Spirit of the Lord is visiting you afresh in the name of Jesus. Now, there is a brother. There is a brother who is addicted to He's addicted to masturbation. Years now. There is a brother who is watching. Who is addicted to masturbation. To lift the, name of Jesus. the power of the Holy Spirit is here to set you free. I want you to go on your knees. And ask. Stand in the, gap for the, city. the master to forgive you. And fill, heaven with our words. and fill you with his spirit. I break. That power of masturbation. You see, when you get into that habit, it becomes a spirit. I break that spirit in the name of Jesus. I set you free from the bondage of masturbation. And I want you to go on your knees and ask for forgiveness and ask him to restore you. Tonight, that habit is being broken in the name of Jesus. As many who wants the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit, just lift up your hands wherever you are. Hallelujah. 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 Master. Touch your people tonight. Visit your people in their homes, wherever they are watching. 
with your glory, with your presence tonight. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. The presence of God is visiting you. I want you to believe it. If you can stand up and lift up your hands, just do it. The power of God is coming on you right now. In the name of Jesus. Power of the Holy Ghost. Power of the Holy Spirit. Touch each and every one tonight. Visit each and every one with your might. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. And now I command any pain, any infirmity, any sickness, any disease. I want you to lay your hand. Just put your hand wherever you are suffering. Any pain, any infirmity. I'm not the healer. The healer is Jesus. There is an anointing here to heal. There is an anointing flowing from the Lord Jesus. I want you to lay your hands on wherever you are suffering the pain. Wherever you are suffering. Wherever you want the Lord to touch you. I want you to lay your hands over there. The power of the Holy Spirit is going to hit you right now. In the name of Jesus. There is an anointing coming over wherever you are. Just lay your hands on where the pain is. Right now. Right now. I command any pain. I command any pain in the name of Jesus. There is somebody watching. You have a pain in, in the left side of your chest. The left side of your chest. There's a pain in the left side of your chest. I command it to go right now in the name of Jesus. Receive your healing right now. Now as many who are watching. I command any pain. I command any infirmity. I command any disease right now. By the power of the Holy Spirit. Wherever you are. I want you to lay your hands on that sickness. The master is right there with you. The master is right there with you. Just lay your hands on wherever the pain is. Master. As you are there. Take the sickness out. Take every pain out. Take every infirmity out. I command it right now to go. I lose your people from every bondage of infirmity. Of any infirmity, any pain right now. In the name of Jesus. Receive your healing. Receive your healing. Receive your healing. In the mighty name of Jesus. And now I declare. That our, one of our sisters. Who last week requested about his son. I release. The power of the Holy Spirit. To touch the son strongly. To hit the son strongly. The might of the Holy Spirit. That he would know Jesus as his master. Father, use this boy to touch lives. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you tonight. We bless you, Lord. We glorify you. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you glory. We thank you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. If you believed, if you believed that prayer of faith, the Master has healed you. He's not going to heal you. He has healed you. I want you to believe it. I want you to believe it. The master has healed you from any pain, 
and any infirmity. If you are touched and you want to get back to us, you can reach me in my messenger. You can contact me on the Yahoo messenger. Let us hear what the Lord is doing. And as you have listened to this message, I wanted to share to as many in your contact. Share this gospel of the Lord Jesus. How we need to fellowship with the Holy Spirit. How important it is that we need to spend time with the Holy Spirit. I wanted to share, share to the people in your WhatsApp, share to the people in, if you have any group, share with them, share with them. People of God, we need to push the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we need the spirit of the Lord than ever before. Because we need to walk in the power of the spirit. We need to begin to walk in the might of the Holy Spirit. That when we walk into the hospitals, we don't just go as an ordinary being. We go there as the representatives of heaven. So people can see that we are serving a God who is not dead, but is alive. And when you fellowship with him, your life will change. Nobody will have to tell you to live holy or righteous. It becomes part of your life. It becomes normal. It doesn't become like a burden. It becomes normal. When you fellowship with the Holy Spirit, walking in holiness and righteousness, dressing decency becomes normal, becomes part of your life. You don't have to struggle to do it. So let's spend time and let's fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Let's spend time and fellowship with the Spirit of the Lord. God bless each and every one. God bless you all for your time. God bless you all. I won't be able to mention the names. There's plenty of names. But all that I'll say is each and every one who spend his time to hear the gospel of the Lord Jesus, even if it's one minute or two minutes or three minutes or five minutes, I say, God, richly bless you. And don't forget to share. Share to as many you can bless them with the Lord with the, with the message of our Lord Jesus Christ. Share through WhatsApp. Share through Facebook. Share through any social media that you can push the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. And as you share, it's the same way as you have preached the gospel of the Lord Jesus. God bless each and every one. Like I said, the names are so much that I won't be able to mention Call the names one by one. But my brothers and sisters, may the one who blesses that no one can change, he is the one that I ask to bless you. And I'll see you same time next Saturday. If Jesus doesn't show up, if Jesus doesn't come, because we are in the preparation. Remember? Any time from now, he's coming. And he's coming for a church without spot and without blemish. He's coming for holy church. God bless you. And I'll see you same time next week. But promise you will invite people in your contact. So we can all share the gospel together. I'll see you same time next week. Shalom.